ultimately the answer is love. It's about glorifying God. It's about reaching out to a lost and um, desperate world as the hands and feet of Christ um, to meet the physical and spiritual needs of those um, around the world. It's one thing to see it on television, but it's another thing to actually be there on the ground. Our vision is to ensure that no man, no woman, and especially no child has to die of a needless waterborne related illness. And our long-term vision is even more important, and that's to ensure that every soul, no matter where they're at, has access to the living water, the good news of Jesus Christ. The idea of clean water kind of arose. And I started looking into the, the information about the problem that was around the world with specifically clean water. And when I started seeing the numbers um, of nearly a billion people around the world who don't have a glass of clean water to drink. So this incredible problem uh, led me into doing the research on the water. Um, how can we help them in some way? The answer to that question was realized by the opportunity to give personal water filtration devices to families where clean water is scarce or non-existent. We may not have the ability to clean the rivers and water holes where they collect their drinking water, but we can provide a way for them to clean that water before they drink it. We're here at uh, Lapa Village, and um, I want you to take a look over here. This is their main source of water. This is their water that they use for uh, cooking, drinking, washing their clothes. Everything comes right out of here. Uh, so you can see the quality of water they're using is very, very poor. Um, so we've got a lot of work ahead of us today. It's going to be a good day to bring these people some uh, clean water. Through donations, we were able to purchase 48 filters that would eventually make their way to individual families and in some cases to community buildings such as a school or a church. Months of planning and logistical coordination paved the way for our arrival. But there were some details we couldn't plan in advance, like who would receive the filters. This question would only be answered after viewing the different areas and talking with some of our local contacts. So we spent part of our first day in Iquito surveying some communities to get an idea of what we would be facing on this trip and some of the things to take in consideration for future trips. I remember the first day we got there, we um, ended up walking from the hotel to a local area that would you would classify as a slum here, a place that you would not walk if it was in a place like Chicago or New York. We wouldn't think about going in there. Well, we walked out there in the afternoon, walked right into the center of it. But even with all that water just steps away, many here in Iquitos don't have access to clean, healthy water because of conditions just like this. We looked at the conditions in which the locals were living, both as a community and individually. Even in a place, an area of, of that level of poverty, uh, people were warm. Everyone that we asked to come in was receptive. Didn't hesitate to open up their house, walk us through, show us places that most people wouldn't want us to see, like a latrine, or places that are not well kept. Even though the people were very hospitable, the conditions in which they were living were dire. There was a lot of work to be done, but we needed to head back it was Sunday, and we would be attending a local church service that night. This is also where we would be meeting our main contact, a pastor who has been serving in Peru for nearly 20 years. Luckily, the pastor that we had been working with, the U.S. pastor who has a ongoing relationship in the area, he was able to meet us and five of the local pastors. So what happened was we met him in, a local, in one of the small churches and we presented the idea of worship through water and really the vision, the goal of what we, uh, why we were there. We said, we have the filters. You guys decide or you pastors decide how many filters will go to each site. So they decided all that. We wanted to make sure that we were no part of that. We didn't want to dictate to them where the filters went. We wanted them to tell us where the greatest need was. Once we had um, worked with the pastor to figure out where we were going to, we needed a day to gather up all the supplies because we only brought the filters themselves down. We wanted to buy as much as we could there, obviously because shipping is, ex is expensive, but also allows us to pump money into the local economy. We spent a full day running around through the markets, locating the additional supplies that we needed, such as the, um, the, the buckets. With all the supplies bought and everything prepared, the next day months of planning, praying, and coordination would come together and our mission would finally begin. We would arrive at a site 
and then we and the pastor would lo, um, navigate us to a central location. Most of the times it was in a church. We would set up the units, so we'd transport the water filters in. And along with each of the water filtration systems, each family was going to get what we called a hygiene bag. And inside the hygiene bag, they got soap, they got sponges, toothpaste, toothbrushes, uh, and a few other things for the family. And what we'd, we would do is we would tour the neighborhood. We want to see the conditions, see exactly what the families, um, see what the needs are, uh, and see, um, just get a one-on-one -on -one or a close-up view uh, of the problems. We were able to go through their house and see how they were storing the water. And that's the water they drink? That's the water they esa, drink? Esa agua toman. Yeah, it's just a drinking. We were able to talk to the families and ask them, you know, what is it that's been affecting you illness-wise? So we were able to gather that information to make sure that the training we were giving them was to the point. And we had all the families come down to us at a set time. And then we would start off with explaining the water filtration device. It was demoing the device, teaching them how to um, clean the device, uh, teaching them how to store their water safely. And we spent a good deal of time talking about the contamination cycle because it does no good to drink clean water if you're still introducing the germs into their body. We talked to them about very basic things like how to wash your hands properly. We um, demoed for them how to make a portable hand washing station out of a basic bottle and a string. Uh, we talked to them about how to keep their latrine clean. It was a very, very basic training, but if they stick to it, if they follow it, it'll really greatly improve the health of the family. One of the things that we did is we took a couple bottles of water and we put salt in one and not in the other. They couldn't see the difference and we had one of them drink the clean water or the unsalted water and one of them drank the salt water. So they could see that just because the water is clear and it looks the same, it doesn't mean it's healthy. And the response that we got was very good. People seemed to be very attentive and they were, I think, truly interested in learning because it, they see that their families are sick. And the feedback we got from the pastors on the ground was extremely positive and that the people had really um, gotten a lot of good information. After we did the, the physical part, um, we moved on to the, the next most important, or the most important part, which is the spiritual part. What we're able to do is use the Evangel Cube, a great tool for evangelizing, presenting the salvation plan. We're able to witness to the groups of people, walk through, through uh, with the families that there's only one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. And before each family left, we ensured that each one of them had a Bible in their own language. We took a, a, a questionnaire of each family. We got their names, their addresses, their ages, and basic health and sanitation data on the family. So this allows us to follow up with the families later. And it also allows us to relay that information to local pastors on the ground. With the training complete and all the filters in the hands of the families, the villagers gathered under the school we were in and started to worship as we cleaned up our gear. This eventually became an impromptu Bible study with each family using the Bible they had just received. With our first village behind us, the training became easier and easier, with every day becoming more successful than the one before. The people were responding, they were learning, and they were ready to put their new knowledge to work. I remember uh, in one particular instance, we delivered one of the filters to a local church. And the time we went, they actually had a team of medical missionaries there. So the medical team was inside um, um, treating people. And there was a line, uh, 50, 100 or more people outside. And it was in the mid-90s, sweltering hot outside and even worse inside. So we, we delivered this filter. Um, it's one of the larger filters for the church. And we were able to set it up, fill it with water, and hand out glasses of water to people in line. Just the ability to pass out a glass of uh, clean water and see the smiles and see the looks on their faces. And I think that that was the most impactful, most memorable thing, seeing lives change. As anyone who has been on a mission trip can tell you, it becomes addictive. To play a role in changing someone's life in a positive way is intoxicating. The moment you return is the moment in which you start thinking of when you can go again. So one of our goals is to form a relationship where we can come alongside another organization and kind of form a holistic ministry. So as they're focusing maybe on strictly uh, evangelizing, we'll be doing the uh, physical and the evangelizing. So we'll be forming a, um, a holistic approach to spreading the good news. Lastly, I'd like to say, just get involved somewhere. If it's not with my ministry, get involved with the thousands of other ministries, Christian ministries around the world. You don't have to go to Peru, don't have to go to Burundi, you don't have to go to Turkey. You can go to downtown Orlando 
You can go to the food shelter. You can help with the children's ministry on Sunday. Get out, get involved, become the hands and feet of Christ. Show his love to a lost uh, and desperate world.